Hey everybody, uh, Maskus here. I uh, know I haven't been uploading to this channel in quite a long time. Hopefully um, I will change that and start doing more frequent uploads uh, and making more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh content. Uh, I decided today to, since I had some time, to go over uh, my Rescue Ace deck list from this past week. Uh, I go to a local that has a tournament on Tuesday nights and a tournament on Saturdays. Uh, on the Tuesday night tournament, I went 4-0 with a uh, different looking list than what I had here. Um, and then on Saturday, we do a five round Swiss, then we cut into top eight. And I went undefeated there going 8-0 with this exact deck list. Uh, this was all post ban list. I know that, you know, it's not January 1st yet. Uh, it's going to be January 1st tomorrow, but uh, when I'm recording this at least, and probably when this is going out. But yeah, uh, we like to play, you know, when the new ban list gets announced under the new format to get some more testing in. Um, and yeah, just because, you know, why are we playing the old format, basically? <laughs> anyway, uh, I decided beforehand for a little bit to play other decks, even before the new ban list was announced. Uh, right after YCS Richmond, where I actually top 16 with Rescue Ace. Um, so I decided after that tournament, I was just going to play, like, other decks just to experiment because, you know, I was already did well with Rescue Ace. Might as well, like, try different decks in the format as well. Try some of my old favorites, go back to, like, Tier or, like, other uh, decks like Labyrinth or something. But n nothing was really clicking with me. Um, and I was getting sick and tired of <laughs> losing a lot at Locals just because... You know, it's just not fun to show up to locals and, and lose all the time. Uh, so I decided to go back to Rescue Ace because it's just what I feel is the best deck. Uh, and I don't know, I think I've been pretty good with it. Uh, and yeah, my results kind of show that, I guess. Uh, I definitely still make a ton of mistakes just in play. Maybe not with um, just like little little tiny things that, that definitely could be exploited, but... Um, I probably just got lucky in some of my matches, but, you know, uh, you gotta be lucky sometimes to win. So, going over the deck list, uh, we've got pretty much a standard lineup of what you should see Rescue Ace going forward, with the three, uh, Hydrant and the now limited, uh, Rescue Ace Airlifter. Uh, you definitely need to play the, at least two Preventer and two Turbulence. Uh, I love Rescue Ace Impulse. Uh, I think this card is really, really strong, especially... Um, going into a format where only where you only have one airlifter, because if you're going second and uh, your opponent activates an effect, you can go into impulse into fire engine, and then most of the time, if they want to set up, they're going to have the special summon again. So then you get to your airlifter off of the fire engine, and now you already have two bodies on the board plus an emergency in hand. Or if you already have emergency, you can search for an HQ or an alert, and uh, now you already are set up. So if you have hand traps on top of doing this, so if you start with like. Um, like impulse plus imperm on a starter then yeah you're not technically it's like kind of a twofer but you get like they two for you because they activate an, an effect they still have all their cards and you're, you're losing two cards but one of your cards gets recouped uh with the fire engine and if they want to extend it's kind of like a mini max c in a way where you get another guy off of it and then you're going to get a card back if you're searching the uh emer the airlifter anyway so it's it's kind of like you never negged yourself in order to stop their play uh you just regain all your cards back and then you draw an extra card for going second and drawing for turn so um that's in theory if all of that resolves also if like they tr they you know you get through there and they ash this that's pretty good as well if you have a uh, follow-up to play with um something that i changed from both my uh my list on tuesday and my uh richmond list is that i increased the number of black witch and I've also increased the number of Original Sin. Um, the reason why is because now with one Airlifter, you really need to see the Bell Star in order for you to actually start to play the game. Because what is going to happen most of the time is that you're going to start with the Bell Star, summon out a uh, Hydrant, and then the Hydrant's going to search you the Airlifter, and then the Airlifter will get you to the Emergency. And then from there, you should be able to play the game. Uh, whether or not you have an extra rescue base name in order to emergency something away, or you have to emergency right there and get you to a uh, get you to the turbulence that way, or if you already have emergency, you can search for air, for alert, and then the alert can go and get you the uh, the turbulence right there, and then you can make a little night afterwards, then summon out the uh, turbulence, and then uh, set forward that way. So you're at least ending on the uh, the turbulence and the SP plus four. 
Uh, and most of the time, what that's going to do is get you to an emergency to uh, flash in Preventer, sack Preventer to summon back the, uh, the Hydrant, and then the Rescue can bring back the Preventer. Or if you want to keep the Rescue for another Interrupt, if they're playing a graveyard base deck, you could Rescue back something in their graveyard. But then having the, uh, the Hydrant online represents follow-up. It also turns on both the Extinguish and the Contain that are going to be able to get the bonus effects as well, uh, which are really, really strong in a lot of matchups, um, just having those bonus effects. So it's a lot to play through, plus they have a little knight, and if they ever try to interact with you, um, the, the, you will be able to pop them with Turbulence, and it's all off of just a Bell Star. And this is just one card, um, and that's really, really powerful. So it becomes a, a magnet for all their hand traps. That means that they're going to try to imperm this if they see it as, as your first action. They're going to try to Valor it. Uh, they're going to try to do something to this in order to stop you from getting that far. So in order to counterbalance that, uh, we always want to see this card, so we have to max the consistency of it by playing the three wanted and playing the three to Bell Star. But we also want to play three Original Sin. This way is that if they use a Veiler, we already can have Original Sin in the hand, and uh, now we're using that on uh, now we're using it on the Bell Star anyway. Plus we have the one to draw follow up. Uh, so it's it's just turned out to be really really powerful to just use this as the hand trap magnet. And then just have them like get blow, uh, just destroy them with this card anyway. Um, I opted to not play Pot of Prosperity. I did play a Pot of Prosperity in, on the on the Tuesday local, but I took them out uh, in order to actually up the count of Original Sin. Uh, the reason why is this deck now loses a lot harder to draw when it didn't used to lose very hard to draw before. Uh, because normally with Airlifter, you were able to summon the Airlifter and just get Emergency right away. And if they drolled you there, if you had Wanted, you could chain Wanted and just get your Debell Star that way and still set up a Hydrant. And even if Hydrant doesn't search anything, you already got to Emergency, so you could just Emergency away um, the uh, Airlifter for Turbulence and then get your sets that way. So it, it was kind of just like a bad hand trap versus the deck. But playing cards like... Uh, like Prosperity made it a decent hand trap versus the deck because if you needed to use Prosperity to start or you needed to use something like Rota to start in order to get you to the Airlifter, then, you know, like you're getting drolled on that card and it's just your turn kind of ends at some points uh, if that does happen. And sometimes with certain hands in this deck, droll is very impactful and still can, you know, mess you up. But um, with starting with the Bell Star, Droll doesn't really work versus that because you're going to use Wanted in the draw phase, so they can't Droll you there. It also means that the only place that they can Droll you is on the Hydrant. And so if you already have cards to play with, then you're okay. You can Hydrant for this and still get Drolled and be fine because you can at least Normal Summon this. And even if you don't search, you can like end on an SP or something, right? Um, and it puts these two in the graveyard. So if you did open your Turbulence anyway, you're able to uh, just summon that out for, you know, for the value. Uh, so it still makes Droll essentially really, really bad. And if you use this plus you already, like, and you're searching this already, then that means you're probably going to be able to set five because you didn't use your normal summon. So you can either normal summon a, an impulse or you normal summon the airlifter that you already had and, and started with and uh, just play that way. Um, yeah, I don't think I, I will change these ratios going forward. Uh, I know with Phantom Nightmare, uh, Bonfire... Plus, well, Bonfire's going to be in Maze, and then the Populace is going to be in uh, Phantom Nightmare. I'm going to test it to see if um, the Redundancy is good enough, but I feel like that is also still going to be playing in the draw if you Bonfire for the Populace, because that searches it there, and then if they draw you, um, you're just not playing the game anymore because you're not going to be able to search for the original Sin. Uh, so you have to open the Bell Star on top of that. So it might just be better to even not go for that, um, even though Populace is still like a really, really strong card. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to look at and test around, but... Um, yeah, for the engine, this is pretty much the best thing that I could think of, and uh, it felt really, really good all day. Uh, the non-engine also just kept it as generic as possible with the nine hand traps, but uh, the other en non-engine slots is I played the uh, double, triple tactics talent. I think this card's absolutely crazy because I think we're in a hand trap format, and if you ever get hand trapped, you're just able to either recoup by drawing into your cards, um, or you're going to just look at their hand and get rid of the other hand trap and just beat them that way because like like i said if they hand trap this and you already have this so say like say they use a veiler on this and then you look at their hand before you activate this you know you guarantee that you're going to go off and probably that they're going to lose so uh this card's really good it's also good at breaking boards as well because you can play into stuff where like you summon a guy they use a an effect on there and now you're like taking their thing um 
I put in a call by, I, know, I don't really love this card, but it is broken in a lot of scenarios um, because like, it's just this one of that like says win the game sometimes. Uh, I don't really like it going um, going second. Like it's one of the worst cards going second, but um, yeah, like when I'm going second, I side this out a lot. So it's is what it is. I just wanted a, uh, a 40 second card because again, you want to play, it, I, you would want to play 40, but you never want to draw these. So these are like the biggest bricks in your deck. And um, I just want to go a, two above because I play two bricks. So I want to go two above 40 in order to compensate. Um, that was just my theory on it. And yeah, it worked out fine. Uh, I drew these sometimes, but because I, I, I pretty much like max out on the witch, if I draw this, I, like every time I did draw this, I did have a witch. So it was fine you just discard this with witch and then you use the emergency to reset it or sometimes what i was doing i was i was getting the hq because my hands were so good that i would just like use the hq to shuffle this back draw a card and then just set it with a turbulence so um yeah that was really powerful uh going on to the extra deck we got uh typhon uh this card is really really good in theory it's just uh over the courses of, of the the tournaments i don't think i made this very much um it's just there's certain spots where you would think this card is great, and it does come up and, and does the thing that it, it needs to do by clearing out a monster or whatever, but um, you having to end your turn is, like, by not being able to summon anymore is, like, really awkward, because sometimes you will want to, like, summon out something and, like, try to play, but you trying to play is going to lead to, like, a worse situation where Typhon is less impactful. So, yeah, it, it's kind of awkward sometimes, but... In the games where it performs, it overperforms. So I don't think you can cut this card. Um, yeah, it, it, it's still strong. Um, All Mirage, we play this for the one card Heat Soul combo. Uh, so what you can do with Hydrant is that you can uh, normal summon the Hydrant and then go uh, search for Preventer. If you really have like no other plays, you can go for uh, searching for Preventer, then link off the Hydrant for All Mirage, and then summon the Preventer. Um, make... Salamander Great Sunlight Wolf to, uh, with the Preventer and the Amirage, then this brings back the, uh, the Hydrant, and then the Hydrant can go in the Link Karibo, and then you can bring back either the Preventer or the Hydrant at this point, um, whatever you decide, and then you can make, with Link Karibo and Sunlight Wolf, uh, uh, Heat Soul, and then Heat Soul can draw you a card, and then on your next opponent's turn, you can draw a card. So this is like, if you open Hydrant, or they interact with you some weird way, um, that, like, they, I don't know if they, like, stop the hydrant searching and you already have Preventer, or, like, you have Alert already, but, like, you can't get to any other names or something. I mean, probably, like, if you have Alert already, you're going to be going for the Turbulence anyway, but still. Um, it's just a way that you can, uh, like, if you do get stopped on some of the weaker hands to end on something that might be substantial, because you're going to be trying to draw into hand traps, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, that's why we play the All Mirage. Uh, the Link Rebo, very good utility card, especially for making uh, SPs to banish stuff with and linking off the, uh, the Hydrant. Uh, Link Spider is for if you uh, play pretty greedy, and um, but you can still hold back a little bit. So if you have like a monster in hand that you can summon, like if you keep Preventer up, uh, you're able to get Nibirud and then link off the token for, a, uh, for the Link Spider and then summon out the Extender and then the Extender plus the token can make um or plus the link spider can make an sp and then the sp can banish their nibiru because you're making it with link spider and uh that way you're able to just like beat a nibiru play against you and then the preventer can bring something back uh and then you if you have sets you can just set or you can hold on hand traps so it, it's a way to play through nibiru and uh establish a substantial board that way uh, then we have IP. IP, again, is really good in theory. I think I only made this one time over the course of the weekend, but um, it's pretty good in theory just because if, if you know that you're safe, you can make this and then your board becomes a lot stronger instead of making the SP because now you can link this into an SP and like trigger your preventers. Um, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Uh, it's very bad versus talent though. If uh, someone talents you, it's like kind of awkward because you need to IP and then make something bad and then they'll take either something that's bad the like the bad card that you make or like they're taking a um like a different card that you're that you're bringing back or something so yeah uh but still I don't think I, I would cut it um I still think it's pretty good uh double SP this is absolutely sanitary this is the best card in your extra deck uh just by far this card's <laughs> this card's just incredible 
uh, being able to just like banish something uh, and then like, you know, banish itself, protect itself, protect your setups, uh, really, really strong. I, w I went through some games where like, I was playing versus Lab in the finals and they like did everything in their power to, they like open really awkwardly. They open like anti-spell, uh, like Daruma Cannon. And I don't, I don't think like the, the trap that they had was good enough. I think it was something like that wasn't very good. Um, and so like I played through the anti-spell and Daruma Cannon by being able to make an SP. Um, and like just my hand was so really good. So I was able to make like a Link Rebo then make into SP or, or maybe it was Omar or something. But like I was able to just make SP and banish the anti-spell that they said. And still, even after summoning um, this once, uh, I summoned this off of like an emergency. And then I summoned it off of a... Um, uh off of its own effect and then i was able to prevent her it back at, at a certain point and then set four anyway through like again uh anti-spell and uh karma cannon so and all, all thanks to sp little knight so this card's incredible uh suddenly wolf for the recursion uh again with the play with the heat soul uh the charmers charmers are just so good um being able to be spellcasters to get you to selene which is so good because that's the sell you otk uh, you go Selene, and then you bring back a spellcaster, usually Witch. Uh, especially really good when you make Selene sometimes in grind games, because you can Selene back this and uh, just set set up that way, so you can set your, your Sinful Spoil that way. Uh, so really strong. Uh, yeah, decode again for the draw. Uh, drawing two is really good, really good, especially like if you have Turbulence plus set four, and then you draw two, it's like you're probably gonna draw into some sort of interaction whether it's an impulse or it's a hand trap and that's really really good uh appaloosa i was making this less and less but in the games that i did make it it was very very strong uh especially versus like manadium decks because a lot of the times when they have to push they're gonna try to push through monster effects and if you have already like an established board plus an appaloosa um it's really really good it's, it's kind of harder to do now that you are uh only at one airlifter because you're not like really seeing the the strong like normal summon enough in order or retaining a lot of the bodies too because like you summon this out and this retains itself by getting to here so like yeah it, it's a little bit harder to make the appaloosa now but it's still i still think i would play it just because in those game states or in the certain matchups where it's good it's really good uh access code for the kill and uh, Underworld Goddess for just really weird situations where you need to get rid of something annoying. Um, I actually did use this once to get rid of a Starving Venom because if I didn't have any other great way of clearing it, because if I did, I'd lose my entire board. Decided I'm going to just play around that by uh, linking it away for Underworld Goddess. So yeah, that was pretty decent. Uh, for the side deck, we have Triple Draw Mockbird. I was doing something kind of different with the side deck this time. Uh, I was playing a lot of two ofs here uh, in order to basically just like have a spread against certain matchups, uh, except for the Droll Blackbird is like just really good in very specific matchups, but I didn't want to play it because like in the main deck, because I want to be as generic as possible in the main deck in the non-engine, just so that all my non-engine has play versus what the field may be. Um, but in the matchups where certain non-engine is a lot worse, then we bring in the higher impact ones. Uh, so yeah, Droll and Blackbird, very high impact in its matchups where it's good in, uh, but I don't feel like it's mainable just yet. Uh, this may change post Phantom Nightmare when people are playing a lot more bonfire-ish uh, piles. Uh, and also with like the Silent Force, the Voiceless Voice deck, uh, I think Droll and Blackbird's really good versus that. So uh, yeah, that's... We'll see. Uh, but for right now, Draw and really good in the side. Uh, Double Nibiru. This card's really good in theory. It's just uh, you never want to see more than one of it, so I only wanted to have the two. Um, and yet, yeah, it's 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 okay. It's fine. Uh, the Double fantasti Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Uh, this card is... I think this card's pretty good in theory versus a lot of the decks in the format. A lot of them are just going to start with, like, Link Summoning plays, especially, like, in the Rescue Ace Mirror. Uh, they're going to Link Summon at some point, so if you try to draw, you can get there. This is really good versus Manadium because they start with Link Summons. Uh, it's very good versus the Fire King deck as well because they'll also try to Link Summon. Um, yeah, I, I think this card's, uh, I think this card's pretty good. Uh, it lets you fix your hand, lets you draw into more hand traps on, on turn zero. It also, like, you can put back Bricks in the deck, you can put back, uh, you know, just cards that you don't think are, are very good in them in uh, 
for that time. You just try to fix your hand better and also try to draw the hand traps. Also puts a body on the board, which is really uh, substantial as well. So uh, yeah, Fantas May, I think I only resolved it once throughout the day, but uh, it, was, it was decent. Uh, then for the last hand traps, we have DD Crow and Bell. Uh, these are both for uh, Labyrinth. DD Crow is a little bit uh, generic. You can side this in versus like Fire King, same with Bell. Um, but yeah, these were definitely, I definitely sided these inverse labyrinth every time just because I want to be able to hit their stuff. Uh, this also could be for Unchained, uh, because if you like Unchained Blue Dog now, like they really can't play. So, uh, <laughs> or like you can, you can like D Crow, the Yama, it, it's definitely like, it's definitely something to consider. So yeah, I, I think, uh, this card is good for them. And then Bells, like just fantastic versus the Labyrinth deck because they're going to try a big welcome on your turn. Now you have five cards in the deck that are going to answer big welcome. And if you stop them there, they really can't play. Um, I don't think Labs is especially good right now. Even even going forward with Transaction Rollback, I know that does solve some of the some of the problems that Lab does have, but um, I still think that it's kind of it's kind of just going to get bullied out. Like it might be good for the for a couple weeks where Phantom Nightmare is not legal, but once Phantom Nightmare comes out, I think like the decks that uh, lab struggles against are gonna just go insane, like, especially, like, the Fire King deck and maybe this deck, so, um, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, and then I have Soul Release. This is for Fire King, this is also for Lab, because you could just, like, if they put all their stuff in the graveyard of the Lab, you can just activate Soul Release and banish all graveyard, which is really funny. Um, same with Fire King, they put a bunch of their stuff in the graveyard during their setup, so if you activate Soul Release, uh, you get there. Plus, it, this never really came up. I think I did it, like, one time when I was already winning the game just to do it. Um, it was actually versus Branded Runic Chimera where I did that, and um, I just kind of got rid of some names out of the graveyard, but it, it was, like, it didn't matter. I just won that game anyway off of uh, advantage. Um, but in theory, I like this card a lot. It didn't really come up for me that much, maybe if I bump it up, but it's kind of a bad draw. It's... Seems like it'd be good with a thrust package, but I don't think thrust is really that good right now. Um, so I was just trying it out at one. This might be another hand trap, but I kind of just like having this blowout where if you draw it, you're just, you know, winning that game. So uh, again, maybe it goes up to, to two. You might be like, I don't know, you might want to change some other cards on the side deck for that, but I like the soul release. Uh, and then Harpies just for big back row decks as well as like, you know, Labyrinth, you want to be able to get rid of stuff as well. Uh, also, like, some decks are going to probably side into um, the the different, the like, uh, maybe like Skill Drains or uh, Anti-Spell Fragrances. So if you get to that, you can like set this. And same thing, like those hand, um, those continuous traps, uh, I wanted to have a quick play counter to that. So I went with the Cosmic Cyclones instead. Um, also really good versus the Fire King matchup because you can Cosmic Cyclone on the Fire King Island and then like blow up their board and it's really, it's really powerful. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a good MST. Um, so yeah, that's what I have for this deck. Um, probably still keep playing it for the time being if I can make it to locals, but uh, yeah, this is just uh, what I had and what I wanted to share with you guys. And hopefully you, uh, hopefully I went over stuff that you learned something from and uh, hopefully you can replicate my success if you're gonna, take this deck for a whirl. So uh, thanks for watching.